guy. She gave me one person.
Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for her life and legacy. Come on, some of y'all got a sweet potato pie. Some of the preaching things. Amen. Who 
who made it the man, the heaven, and the earth. He will not suffer that foot to be hurt. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shed upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil families. The Lord shall preserve their soul. The Lord shall preserve the going out and the coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The word of God for the children of God. God bless you, family. Amen. Thank you. 
Amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen.
Robinson Funeral Establishment, followed by our very own sister Charmaine Jordan. Thank you. 
said about the past was Sister Gail. Gail was truly an angel placed in our lives by God. Sister Gail was a faithful and dedicated member of this church when she enjoyed singing with Mary J. Mary J. Brown's song and the St. Word Choir, and also a member of the Gifts of Love Charity Ministry. We know this loss will be hard to endure, yet do not grieve God's hope. For God is God who does all things well. His love is unconditional. We 
to have Gail. But God has a different route for Gail. He has a whole different route for Gail. And I just loved her. She was always had the same smile. If you look over at her pictures and see them pop them up there, Gail kept that same smile. Everybody may not agree with me, but everybody don't have the mic. I got the different of what I saw with my eyes. I didn't try to put her in hell. I ain't trying to put her in hell. She had the attributes that the Bible required that we need. Love is the foundation. I don't care how many gifts. I got to cast out demons, but that don't make them go into hell. Glory to God. You got to have love. That's why we got all of these empty churches, because there is no love. We got to love one another. That's the greatest commandment. You don't have to have like no all the commandments. You got to have love. In fact, you don't even have to go to church. You still got to have love. And it doesn't matter what you like. So I thank God for the life and legacy that they have lived. And also, I want to say about Mel, we had a cookout. You don't even have to invite Mel. Look like he can smell the food. Thank you so much, Evangelist Bailey, for those heart 
heartfelt comments. Amen. We're going to hear now from none other than Sister Tina Rollins. She's going to bring us a solo. Then we will have the eulogy by yours truly.
still get excited about that name. The name of Jesus. There's power in the name. God is now going to become an awesome, majestic, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Stand here, Lord, in the sacred place. I humbly occupy this sacred space. I dare not ask you for merely excellence in speech. children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously. But she is excellent above them all. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. I'm going to talk to, to this afternoon from the subject she was all about it. She was all about it. So much has been said about Sister Goo, but it sounds like one thing that everybody here knows is that she was a real deal. There was nothing fake or phony about her. She could smell some game. If you were coming with something that wasn't right, she would politely tell you before you ever opened your mouth. She was well respected in the community. And many of you know her and are dear, or were dear to her better than I. But I'm simply going to tell you what I know. And what I know is she was all about it. I know you wonder, well, well, Pastor, what was she all about? 
the, the first thing she was all about, she was all about her family. Yeah, she, she, y'all agree with that? She was all about her family. She loved her sons. And I'm telling you what, she loved her son and she was the protector of the family. She wasn't just a historian. That's what is said in the Bible, that she was a historian. But you have to understand or know that this woman carried a love and a burden like none other. I wish we could get some more real folk like her that were really about their family. You know why I say that? Because some people will say they are about their family. But some of them don't even like their own kinfolk. It's one thing to say that you doing stuff for your family, but let me just tell you this. The evidence is in what you do. Let me go say it like old school folk, the proof. Y'all gonna finish it is in the pudding. And there's too many folks that don't have any pudding. She was all about her family and not only just her sons. She, she raised sons, upstanding men. She raised sons that would end up being a husband and a father. She raised sons that would be be educated well. She raised sons, but you know what else she was about? She was also about another F. I'm using her family, but I'm also going to use she's about Frankie. She was about Frankie. I remember when Frankie first came out here. She brought Frankie, and she had a love and a passion about Frankie. The next thing I know, Frankie was coming down the aisle. Next thing I know, Frankie was getting baptized. But let me just tell you, now this is a shower of peace. After that, she ended up bringing Frank Frankie into the family. Wait, I don't think y'all caught it yet. This wasn't one of her biological, this was one that she pulled into the family. How is it people can't love folk that have their same blood, but she can love somebody from afar? We need some folk to be about love around here, because I'm telling you what, sending out invitation is not cutting it. Lip service is not going to get it. If you want folks to be real with you, you're going to have to be authentic with them. Somebody shout, you got to be about it. You got to be about your family. She was about her family. She was about Frankie. But also, she was about it with her faith. I heard one of the great scholars say, I'd rather see a good sermon any day than hear one. She showed love to everybody that she was connected to. Look at some of y'all. Y'all, y'all, some of y'all grieving now, not because of her death. Some of y'all ain't gonna get no pie for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Ought to be ashamed of yourself. Look at you. Y'all be ashamed of yourself. Because she was a good cook, she didn't mind serving. And in this text, Proverbs talks about the woman and her virtue was not in what she consumed, it was in what she gave. See, we live in a society where people just want to consume and they want to have things for themselves. But her virtue, her glory, her legacy came from the fact that she was unselfishly able to give and she was all about that so it was about her faith it was about her family let's talk some more about her faith with her faith it was evident that sister good preached at home oh yeah it, it was it, it was evident it, it, i know you're looking at me funny it, it was evident that she preached at home because when she had people in her home, they ended up in the church. Let me, let me try it this time. It's evident that she preached at home because just like with Frankie, he came and he had a conviction. Just He wasn't coming because he was pushed. He was coming because somewhere in that house, the gospel was shared with Frankie. 
And see, the shame of it now is we wait on the preacher and the church to, to give the gospel to folk when the gospel should actually start in the house. It should be some prayer, y'all with me, in every house. There ought to be some praise going on in every house. There ought to be some thanksgiving happening in every house. There ought to be a sermon and a celebration, just like Sister Goo, in every house. And that is what she was about. So what was she about? She was about her family. She loved her son. She loved her kinfolk. She loved her neighbors. She loved those that were connected to her. She loved Frankie, but also she loved her faith. She loved the Lord. She demonstrated it by everything she did. And let's talk about that for a moment because I, I have a news flash for you. The church on Sunday is only a celebration about Monday through Saturday. Some people's going to church on Sunday talking about I got to give them a praise on. We well, should have had some service on Monday through Saturday. Sister Goo taught us that it's about what you do before you ever set foot in the house. So that you can be authentic. And you know where authenticity comes from? That is when the people in your house know that you're real. And that means that they know that your conviction is authentic. Yeah. Amen. I ain't trying to bring this up to cause any chaos. But, uh, but some folks, when, when the children see mama and daddy shouting on Sunday, they get surprised. <laughs> because they, the only time they see them do it is on Sunday but Sister Good apparently she had a walk about her she had the, the love of Christ inside of her that she exemplified each and every day so some said she Jesus fed 5,000 but she fed 200 Jesus walked on water, but she put mail on a plane. <laughs> Jesus walked the dusty fields of Jerusalem and Jericho. She walked the roads down a reedy branch and river road, making sure that people had a hope that they can trust in Jesus. I need y'all to help me, baby, and that's only if you about it. Yeah, I know I'm de I was devastated with the news myself, but I'm telling you, this lady was real. Yeah. This lady is remarkable. This lady left a legacy of love that many only would envy because at the end of the day, everything she did spoke for her. I want you all to know that all of us are going to go that way one day and it's going to happen real fast. If you don't mind me, I don't want you to make a pass at anybody. If I need you to look at somebody and wink at them real quick. Yeah, it's going to happen that fast. In a moment of the twinkling of an eye, we're going to all be changed. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And they that remain going to be caught up in the air. One of these days, and it won't be long, you going to look for me and I'm going to be gone. Yeah, I'm going to give up this earthen tabernacle and it's going to be dissolved because there's a place that the Lord has already went to prepare for us. He talked to his disciples and said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And they said, Lord, where are you going? He said, but I'm going to prepare a place and I'm going to make sure that you have a place to go. Anybody listening to me this morning, are you glad you're going to have a place to go? I'm telling you, Sister Gail has already occupied her spot. Because when it gets up there, y'all know what the Bible says? That he has, um, there are many mansions in my father's house. Can I get you to celebrate the life, the legacy, and the love of Sister Gail Goon this morning, this afternoon? Because I'm telling you, we all are going to be going the same way one day. But you know what I'm glad about? I'm glad that when we take on mortality down here, we get immortality up there. We're going to be in a place where there's going to be eternal rest, and we're going to get the heaven's reward. Is anybody glad? 
that the Lord is a way maker this morning. I know that you're weeping this morning, but he said weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I'm going to tell you what Sister Do was never quiet in church. She was always demonstrative and expressive. Let me just tell you something. When the grandbaby was born, when, bro when Brother Jamar brought the daddy the first time, she started shouting. Yeah, when Frankie came into the family, she started shouting. When Carl went down to Morehouse, she started shouting. And every time she showed up in the house of God, when she wasn't in the choir, she was doing it from the pew. Can I get a few folks this morning that a shout from the pew? If the Lord has been good to you, go ahead and give him some praise right now. If he's made way for you, go ahead and help yourself right now. If you thank God for the life of Sister Good, go ahead and bless the Lord right now. Yeah. She was she was a man. Yes. Her sacrifices said that she was a battle. Yes. Proud mother, grandmother, sister. Yes. I'm so grateful to have known her. And the fact that they are still real folks. Did y'all hear me? There were some real folks that I met on this journey. And she was one that was a battle. After her retirement, she was not idle. But she served and she gave. Is there anybody in the house today that would like to take the same journey that she did? We know you have your family. I know you have your friends, and know you have your faith. Would anybody like to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? I extend that invitation to you. There's a stark reminder every time I do a funeral that we're all just moments away from leaving this earthly place. I had a birthday a few weeks ago in November. And it was also a subtle reminder of how quickly life goes. Yes. The psalmist said, life is but a vapor. <laughs> Don't ever fool yourself by thinking you have a lot of time. Time is not promised to any man. Although the Lord says the average life is three score and ten, and if by reason, four score. But I hope that you have followed her lead. She left an awesome legacy. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for her? Yeah. 